Ladies and gentlemen, are you interested in graphics cards? Well, if so, we have a bit of an NVIDIA fest for you today. We're going to be discussing Volta, which of course is the successor to Pascal, which is naturally the successor of Maxwell. That's a lot of successors. We're going to be discussing the mobile GTX 980, which is now popping up in, of course, laptops. And we're also going to be discussing, well, Pascal itself. So we have quite a bit of information to be jumping through, but we're going to be starting out with the GP100, the flagship of the Pascal line. It's actually been spotted in the shipping manifest. No, don't get too excited. It doesn't mean that, you know, this is the version that's going to be to customers you're going to be picking up in a couple of day time. Instead, this is in transit from TMC's fabrication plants to the testing facilities. In short, they're saying, hey, we've got the silicon made what can we get out of it what clock speeds does it crash is there problems you know that type of thing because at the end of the day you kind of need to test the product now what we understand is the big pascal the, the head pascal i guess you could say has been spotted in zubaba Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, that's Z-A-U-B-A, -A. I butcher foreign names. But anyway, it's moving from uh, Taiwan to Bangalore. Now, that basically means that we've spotted at least nine samples. Now, it's not cheap. In fact, each one is going for ten times that of the same GPU that's found inside the GTX 980 Ti. So that's kind of expensive. Basically, it's indicating the 16 FinFET, you know, the new process that they're working on. Not so much with the cheap in terms of the production. In other words, it's costing them considerably less, which gives you an indication that's one of the reasons they're delaying it. Um, it was originally taped out back in June, which basically means they've kind of finished the, the basic design of it. Um, uh, June this year just to clarify now we do know some details the first is that it is DirectX 12 fully compatible as one would expect and it bloody well better be and it is of course the Pascal micro architecture this is the basis of the GP100 we don't know the uh, exact specifications for example the number of CUDA cores the clock speeds and let's face it some of that stuff is going to be found out as a testing natural silicon itself but it does have an awful lot of transistors. How many transistors? 17 billion. Now, it will feature high bandwidth memory too. A high-end version of the card, supposedly, for the consumer variant, the one that you and I will be buying, has 16 gigabytes of memories. That's a lot of memories. But if you're looking for the professional version, in other words, the ones that, for example, high-end rendering makes that type of jazz, up to 32 gigabytes. One could naturally make the the uh, question pop up. Well, what about the Titan? What about the Pascal Titan? Is that going to have 32 or 16? Good question, my friends. Anyway, moving on. I, I seriously don't know. I'm going to make the assumption that it's going to have 32. But that means it's probably going to be an awful lot of cash. I don't know. Guess it depends on how much NVIDIA can put it down. Uh, we'll get it down to... It will feature naturally the same memory bandwidth we have, uh, sorry, the, the actual bus width that we have now with HBM1. The difference is because it's going to be running HBM2, it's going to have a roughly twice the, the bandwidth. So you're looking at around one terabyte a second, which is not bad. It will have NVLink, which we're we'll going to discuss a little bit further in just a moment. And in addition to that, it's going to have mixed precision FP16. And... On top of that, it's going to have much better compute performance as a whole. That's a good thing, right? It is. Now, I guess we should talk a bit about Volta. I haven't forgot about NVLink, but I want to go into that in just a second since it all ties in. It ties in and stuff. Anyway, I was going somewhere with that and then my train of thought just kind of was like, nope, out the window. Anywho, so Volta. Volta is not going to launch... Um, for a while. It's going to be launching in 2018 for consumer parts. That's what NVIDIA are telling us anyway. But it's going to be powering supercomputers in 2016. So in short, GP100 Pascal is coming out next year. Then the year after that, supercomputers are going to be getting a Volta. And then the year after that, we lowly consumers get Volta. 
Now, Volta is going to be a bit of a different beast. It's going to be utilizing the company's first unified. Um, it's going to be quite a lot of difference because it's going to be the the sixth generation of the architecture that we've seen for some time now in NVIDIA graphics cards. Now, if you cast your mind back to the GeForce 8000 series, for example, the GTX 8800 GTS, the GTX, and even the 9800s, to be totally honest, that are basically rebrand badges, slash rebrands, whatever you want to call them. This represented NVIDIA's major step forward in architecture. What they basically did is they made it so that there wasn't, um, well, they basically unified the shaders so you no longer had separate shaders for for example pixel shaders or vertex shaders and geometry shaders instead you had G uh, you actually had shaders which could do pretty much anything and this helped to alleviate i guess you could say dead zones in the rendering pipeline for example you can, could have one developer who puts an awful lot of work on their pixel shaders but not much on geometry or some who would push lots into geometry but not much into vertex and basically this was a one size fits all approach whereas unified it's not like that the gpu at least in a theoretical world can utilize its resources the best it can in other words it can utilize them more smartly and obviously this is being further improved with different api revisions and shader model revisions but this popped in unified shader model back in direct x 11 actually and is known as shader model 4.0 now getting back to what we were discussing about volta itself as i mentioned this is the sixth iteration of the general purpose gpu architecture and there are going to be some major differences now volta was originally meant to succeed nvidia's maxwell architecture but it just didn't happen um the reason behind this primarily is because hmc is what nvidia are going to be using for the memory now hmc is hybrid memory cube which is a bit of a different version of hbm which obviously is high bandwidth memory as it turns out hbm H hbm is actually further along in development compared to hmc bloody hell with these acronyms it's so hard to keep your head your head straight isn't it anyway so hmc is not matured as fast as what they'd hoped in other words the it's just not ready yet for consumer level um, for consumer level numbers, I guess you could say, and therefore the price and all that stuff is really, 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 really high. Now, remember how just a while back I said to you about NV Link, and you said to yourself, "How oh, you forgot about that?" Nope, I have not, my friends. So NV Link is actually a new type of interconnect, and I guess you could say it's a spirit spiritual successor to PCIe. It is proprietary, which means obviously that NVIDIA pretty much own the gig, and it works in a couple of different ways. It can either have the GPU just talk to another GPU directly, or it could have both GPUs talk directly to the CPU. Basically, it works considerably faster. NVIDIA, if you believe the hype, are stating that it's going to work between 5 to 12 times faster than PCIe 3.0, once again making the assumption that all PCIe lanes on you know 3.0 are working rather than you know just like one lane or something ridiculous. That's a good thing because let's say you've got 12 times the speed of PCIe 16, you can start dealing with considerable amounts of memory bandwidth. You know, if you've got like PCIe, just so we're clear, just so we're clear, PCIe hits around 16 gigabytes per second. Um, that's obviously peak, assuming no overheads and best case scenarios, and nothing else is like eating into the PCIe bandwidth. That type of jazz. NV Link um, offers considerably higher. It's promising around 80 gigabytes per second, which is not unsubstantial. That's actually faster in terms of transfer than what DDR3 is. DDR3, obviously, it does depend on the configuration, the clock speed of DDR3, that type of thing. But it hits around the 68 gigabytes per second. It can hit that comfortably uh, with dual channel configuration. 
um, running at 2133 megahertz of memory serves. That, that puts out, if no pun intended, but puts out around 68 gigabytes per second. If you don't believe me, you can ask the Xbox One, as that's what its main memory runs at. So that kind of gives you an indication of where they're going with this. Now, Volta is going to be featuring NVLink, as you would expect. Um, I, it possibly might be an advanced version. Unfortunately, we don't know too much about that. But it's going to have a lot of memory. Now, how much memory, how much memory, how much memory, how much memory, you might be asking. Is it going to have, like, what, 16 gigs? Well, no. We are referring primarily to the server iteration here, which is going to be for Summit and Sierra server nodes. Now, these are going to be for IBM Power CPUs. And the idea here is obviously that a lot of fast memory transfer, but how much memory? Well, um, a lot. <laughs> Up to 200 gigabytes per second of 3D stacked memory, four times the higher bandwidth, three, and it's got three times larger capacity and four times more energy efficient per bit. In other words, we're going to be dealing with an awful lot of RAM. I mean, the NV no, the NV RAM per node is actually 800 gigabytes, but that once again is for the supercomputer. So before everyone thinks, "Oh my God, what the hell," it once again is for supercomputers. So don't be expecting that in your PC in 2017, because or even 18. That's not realistic. Um, yeah, I mean, we're looking at an awful lot of power. The Titan. Um, at the moment, just for clarification, in terms of supercomputing power, the Titan is rated at around 25 petaflops, whereas if you look at Summit, that's S-U-M-M-I-T, it can handle up to 300 p-flops of compute. That's a lot of computing power, to be totally honest. Now, I do want to mention a little bit about the last thing, which is the GTX 980. So it's actually faster than the GTX 980M. You might remember the 980M, um, which was released a while back, and NVIDIA now have said, hey, you know what, we're releasing the GTX 980. In my opinion, that's a really screwed up memory, uh, I'm sorry, memory. That's a really screwed up uh, naming convention, in my opinion. I would have preferred if they'd have called the original the GTX 970 and this the 980, as that would have been more akin to the performance. Or if they'd have called this the 980 and then they'd have called the other one the 980 tie. Something to, I don't know, just make it a bit clearer to the consumer. And that I've got a problem with, and I could rant about that to be totally honest, about you know being clearer to the consumer. Um, it's less of a problem than what it used to be. Because of memory types, so like back in the day, back in like early 2000s, in particular like 2004, 2005, 2006. Actually, the biggest problem I think was when DDR3 and GDDR5 cards were like a thing. And DDR3 was like a thing for mid-level cards. It was a real problem, it really was. You would have like so many different iterations of the same GPU, but just slight naming differences. It was a it was a major problem. I really didn't like it. It really confused quite a lot of people. Anyway, moving back on. So, it is faster. How much faster? Around thirty five percent. Now it will support all of the regular stuff that you'll expect for the card. It's going to have things such as DSR. It's going to have. Support Support for DirectX 12. I say it in such a way because we all know about NVIDIA's support for DirectX 12, the same as AMD. Basically, no GPU at the moment is fully DirectX 12 compatible. That's just how it is, unfortunately. But the GTX 980 will come with 2048 CUDA cores, 128 texture mapping, 64 ROPs, blah, 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 blah. Once again, if one compares that to the GTX 980M, you can see there's quite a lot of difference. For example, it's got 2048 CUDA cores compared to 1536. Personally, I would have preferred, as I said, a bit of a difference in naming conventions. But, well, it is what it is, unfortunately. But, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I, I've kind of flew through this one, haven't I? Flew, I say. 
I have uh, taken wings and such. Anyway, I'm going to get going. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.